we're gonna talk about a strategy to save yourself some money and you have to take part in this strategy before the end of the calendar year. So there's this thing called the Section 179 deduction. And what the idea is, is that you can elect to deduct or fully expense in a calendar year a piece of equipment or a truck or something that qualifies for this deduction. So as an example, maybe there's a truck or a piece of equipment that normally you would depreciate it on your taxes, meaning that let's say it has a seven year depreciation schedule. So you bought a truck, it's got a seven year depreciation schedule. That means you can depreciate a portion of that truck every year across a seven year schedule or seven year time period. Whereas if you elect to participate in the section 179 deduction for that truck, you can now expense it as an expense versus depreciation all in one calendar year. And so what many companies will do is they might finance a truck for $30,000 and they're gonna make payments on that truck of some amount each month. Let's just make up a number and say it's $600. So they're gonna make payments each month for $600. But in the calendar year, they fully deducted the $30,000 off their taxes. So if they had $30,000 in profit left over within the year, they bought a truck for $30,000, they fully deduct it using the 179 sec uh, section 179 deduction, they have fully, completely offset their $30,000 profit for the year with the $30,000 truck expense, and now they'll show a $0 profit for the year, and they'll pay $0 in taxes on profits. Now, they'll still pay their payroll taxes on themselves, just like they normally have. And then that truck will get expensed at 600 or I'm sorry that truck then will cost them $600 per month until that truck is paid off. Now the trade-off is that they did get their $30,000 deduction in this calendar year that saved them the taxes on 30,000 and the beauty of that is that the money they would have sent to the government as tax on the $30,000 profit now stays in their pocket so they can use it for marketing or growth or reinvestment next year. I wouldn't recommend you do this and then take that money as profits to yourself to go buy a bigger home. You would use that money to reinvest in your company. The idea is now you have more money left over to grow your business faster. Now know that the trade-off you've made is you got the deduction in this calendar year. So next year, when you uh, incur $600 in January, 600 in February, 600 in March, your payment, all right, so you incur a $7,200 expense for the year on your profit and loss statement, that $7,200 will not be deductible on your taxes. You already took the deduction in the previous year. So at $7,200 that you're gonna spend in making payments in the next calendar year will result in 7,200, it won't be deductible, so you'll have $7,200 in profit. So you will eventually pay the tax. There's no getting around it. It's just that this year you saved the taxes so you had more money in your pocket so you could spend it to grow the company. But in future years, until that truck is paid for, all of those payments will be taxable. And by taxable, again, I simply mean that if, if you had $7,200, um, let's see how I could say this, that, that $7,200 will not be deducted from the revenue of your company. So if your company made $100,000, you can't deduct the 72 from your $100,000 income as an expense. And so that's going to essentially end up on the bottom line of your P&L as an additional $7,200 in profits for the year so you'll pay the taxes. I hope that's clear. And that's the trade-off you're making. You're just saving money in the short term from a tax standpoint, but you will pay it in the future. There's no way around it. Instead of depreciating the asset, you fully expensed it. The advantage is exactly what I said. The advantage is that you retain the money you would have given the government in this calendar year. You retain it so that you can reinvest that money into your company and grow the company. Now, these, little, these types of things are very potentially beneficial invaluable. Now you didn't have to use that money to get a line of credit or you have that money in your bank account as a cash pad. But these are also, so it's beneficial in that sense, but these are also the things that complicate running a business where at the end of the year, you look at the bottom of your state, your P&L, and it says you made $50,000 and you look at your bank and say, where's the $50,000? Well, you're not going to see $50,000 in your bank account because you're playing a tax game. And so there are things, money that left your bank account that were expenses, but you don't get to deduct them. They, they're not expenses that come off of your revenue. And as a result, your profits look higher than they really were. You didn't really get 50 grand in your bank account because again, remember that $7,500, that left your bank account, 
but it shows up on the bottom of your P&L as profit because you got the expenses in a private prior year. And this is where it starts to get complicated where individuals misunderstand the cash flow of their business, they misunderstand the real profits of the business or how, how that works, and it all starts to get confusing. And, and so there's a game, there's a trade-off. You're no longer running the business in a simple way. And as a result, it can create confusion and you need generally to either understand your accounting, your finance, or you need your, a good accountant that can explain this to you. And you need to understand where you're at on a monthly basis from cash flow, or you could get yourself into some trouble. In my mind, I've taken part in the section 179 deduction quite a bit and have for years. There are those that say it's not worth it. It's just, it's just shifting the tax burden slightly one year or saving yourself a little bit of money in one year. And so it's not worth the game that you're playing and the complexity it builds in your business or the misunderstanding of your numbers that might occur in the future. But many play this game and I frankly have as well. So you need to decide what's right for you. I will tell you that when it comes to buying things, I do like to buy things this time of year and get the deduction that is nice, but the reason I most like doing it is because oftentimes at the very end of the year, you can go back to your vendors, and you can negotiate big discounts by pre-buying, whether it's equipment, or maybe it's buying a bunch of trucks at once, maybe it's buying chemicals. There's a whole number of things that if you do a lot of the buying, if you have the money, you don't wanna run yourself out of money, you don't wanna put yourself in a tight cash position coming into spring, but if you have the money, more exciting to me than trying to shift your tax burden a little bit from year to year is the idea of trying to negotiate a 10 or 20% discount on what you're buying. I don't know what that discount might be. It could only be 5%, but that might still be very justifiable to even get a small discount. And so that's where it becomes even more interesting to me to buy in the previous calendar year, the things that you will consume and use in the next calendar year. So, you might take a look, uh, ask your accountant about the Section 179 if that sounds advantageous to you. Even if you're paying off the, the vehicle in, in cash, everything I just said applies, but the game, the arbitrage is in financing the equipment or the truck, fully depreciating it now and then paying for it over time later. That's the arbitrage that companies are playing. You have to decide for yourself if it's worth it. Thanks a lot. See you later.